Hello there. Uh, we'll get started in a few minutes um, at 11 uh, Eastern time. Uh, I just want to know if folks can hear me. Um, if you can hear me, I just testing um, just in the in the chat box. Just just let me know if you can hear me. Hi, can people hear me? Hi there. Yes, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Like I said, we'll get started in a couple of minutes. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Statistics Solutions uh, webinar on Chapter 5, the discussion. Uh, just a couple of things before we get started today. We do have a support person um, on with us who can answer um, any questions, like technical questions not related to content. Um, and we'll also provide you links for where you can access um, versions of today's webinar and um, our other webinars that are archived. Okay. Um, also, I will take questions um, at the end. So um, if you want to type your questions either into the question and answer box or the chat box, feel free to as you think of them throughout the presentation. But I won't be able to, I won't get to them until the end. Okay. So if you are on the chapter five, congratulations. If you're not, you're just looking ahead. That's good too, to just to kind of see what to expect. Uh, but if you've made it this far, um, congratulations. You're, you're near the end of the race. There's still work to do. Um, but uh, hopefully you can see the kind of the, the finish line in sight. Uh, so yeah, chapter five is the discussion. Typically, if we're following the typical you know, social science uh, five chapter model, um, where you discuss and interpret your findings. Okay, so here's what we're gonna be covering today. And these generally align with the features, the expected features of the discussion chapter. Um, you're gonna hear me say this several times throughout the presentation, but you, if you haven't already, uh, make sure you obtain a copy of your school's guidelines or template for the dissertation for the chapter. 
um, because now while what I have on the screen is pretty general and pretty typical, um, schools do have, you know, little, maybe little variations. Sometimes the headers will have different titles. Sometimes they'll be, um, you know, in a different order. So again, these will work as a good general template. Um, and pretty typical, but again, if, if your, your school will sometimes have little differences, so always, you know, go to your school's template. Okay, so these are the sections we're going to be covering today. Again, um, typical section, sections of a chapter five. Okay, <laughs> the introduction. Um, you know, just just it, the purpose of the introduction of this chapter is like um, other chapters, you want to introduce the material, but you also want to kind of reorient your reader. Um, so chapters are, you know, to some degree, they're stand, they, they can be kind of read as standalone chapters. So um, in the introduction, it, it's always helpful for the reader to restate the purpose of your study. You know, what was your study designed to do? Remind the reader of the uh, the importance of your study, the research problem, you know, why your study was needed. Um, and if you want, you can also kind of preview contents of the chapter, the sections that are to come. A pretty cut and dried introduction. Um, some schools want you in the introduction also to summarize your findings. Um, that's fine. That usually comes at the end of, of the introduction. Um, and a summary of your findings is just what it sounds like. It's, it's a summary. You don't need a lot of statistics. Um, in fact, the, the chapter five should be relatively statistics free, not entirely, but, um, you know, all the statistics are in chapter four and the results chapter. Um, and chapter five is a more plain spoken, um, a chapter, uh, like I said, statistics light or sometimes statistics free. Um, so when you summarize your your, your findings, um, again, make it a summary. It can just be, uh, you know, and look for the, look at the end of chapter four where you've summarized your results and that will give you a good, um, you know, guideline for summarizing your, your findings here for this chapter. Okay, the next section is usually called something like, interpretation of the findings. Sometimes it's called discussion of the findings, which is a little confusing because the chapter is called the discussion. Um, but this is really the heart of the chapter. Um, <clears throat> and it, it's a little tricky, but once you get your head around what they're expecting, um, I think you know it becomes clear to people what, what they're looking for and what you're, what you're trying to do. And basically what you're, you're doing is you're, you're taking your, your findings, <clears throat> uh, stating your findings, and you can, you can section this section out with subsections based on your RQs, if it's quantitative, or, or your themes, if it's qualitative. Um, so, you know, for example, research question one, you can restate it. Um, Kind of lay out your findings, you know, briefly summarize what you found, uh, discuss that a little bit. But the real, the real thing they're looking for is um, how your findings compare to some of the major findings of previous research. Um, you know, and noting whether your findings either support previous research or they differ from previous research or they, you know, they add something entirely new. Um, so again, have your research question, research question one or theme one, state it, um, discuss what, it, you, you know, just discuss a little bit as far as, you know, summarizing it, then start bringing in uh, material from chapter two um, on the area or the topic related to the theme of the research question and noting, you know, Smith, you know, 2017 found, Smith found, uh, these findings, um, my findings support those of Smith, or my findings do not support those of Smith. And you bring in some of the, the major research on the topic, um, again, noting similarities and differences. And the idea is to kind of um, have a discussion, right, of the findings, uh, the results in relation to the other literature. Um, and what you can do, uh, then what that tells us is, if your findings 
support previous research, then you can pretty much make conclusions based on that. If your findings don't support previous research, then that suggests that there's some degree of inconclusiveness. Uh, and sometimes you can recommend further research or that might have certain implications for the research. Um, so that's, that's kind of what um, what's expected in the interpretation of the findings. And then for your next research question or your next theme, you move on and you do the same thing. Um, <clears throat> if there's any findings, sometimes, especially with qualitative research, you'll find something new or something unexpected. Um, that's definitely worth noting. And just try to tie in the um, you know previous research as closely as you can if there's nothing really on that topic. Um, as far as bringing in your theory, um, like the, you know, your theoretical foundation or the theory that's part of your theoretical framework, um, there's kind of a few ways to handle that. Uh, if your theory works in with these sections, if it's easy to kind of integrate your theory in these sections and it helps you explain some of the results, by all means, bring your theory in. Um, Sometimes people find it helpful to uh, have a, a, a different section for the theory. Um, and you can just call it like links to theory or something um, where you discuss your findings specifically in relation to the theory that you used. Um, sometimes the theory, I've seen people not discuss the theory and just kind of just use previous research to set up the discussions of their findings. Um, that's fine too. Sometimes that's, you know, dependent on the chair. Um, I, I've seen people not discuss the theory. I've seen people bring the theory in. It, it kind of depends on, uh, ideally you should probably bring your theory in. Um, but again, sometimes it's not always necessary. I think it's if your theory, uh, really helps to explain what you found and there's really some clear links or some contributions to the theory that you're making. Um, that would help you determine um, how to bring or whether to bring the theory in. Okay, uh, limitations. So, yeah, that um, and another suggestion, you know, using your resources is great that you're, you know, attending webinars, um, that, you know, you're, you're looking on the internet at reputable sources about, you know, how to go, go about discussion chapters. Use your resources. I think that's fantastic. Another suggestion is to, if you haven't already, again, obtain um, an approved dissertation from your school in a similar area or, you know, similar study uh, that you've done. Uh, because sometimes there's just no substitute um, for having an example or two at hand when you sit down to draft these chapters. Um, you can see what, how somebody else has handled the content of certain sections. Um, Again, you know, you can have things explained to you, you can read the guidelines and you think you get it, you go to draft and it, it kind of doesn't make sense. So having an example um, is oftentimes really helpful. Uh, next usually comes a section on the limitations. Um, and this is noting or explaining any shortcomings or weaknesses that may have affected your results. And the idea here is that, um, you, know, you have the results, you have the interpretations that you just you just talked about or the discussion of the findings. Um, but if anything kind of may have affected your results, that needs to be noted because that means there's kind of an asterisk by your findings, right? Um, for example, like for, for quantitative studies, um, if you had a low sample size, like if your, your study was underpowered, um, that's a limitation that can affect your results because that affects your uh, statistical certainty that decreases your statistical certainty. So um, that needs to be noted. So the idea for the reader is that, um, yes, here's my findings, but because of certain limitations, we, we kind of need to consider these limitations when we, when we look at the, the findings. Um, but that would be a major one for, for quantitative research. Um, sometimes you can't get the population that you wanted. You have, have to use other people instead of the, the population you're looking for. That could constitute a, a weakness. Um, for qualitative studies, um, <clears throat> sometimes things like um, 
you know, researcher bias, um, you know, that, that sometimes you're too close to the topic. Um, and there, there's various ways to mitigate or prevent researcher bias. And if you think, you know, that may have been an issue, you can talk about those ways that you that you helped prevent um, researcher bias. Uh, they also want you to talk about the generalizability of your results to the larger population. In other words, how, how well might your findings from the sample group of yours translate to the larger population? Um, if your study is quantitative and you met your sample size, you know, you have an adequate sample size or larger, um, you know, chances are your, your, your findings are going to generalize pretty well. It also has to do with your, your sampling procedure, randomized, you know, random samples um, usually generalize better because they're, they're more representative of just, a, you know, random cross section of the, uh, or random sample of the, the larger population. Um, for qualitative studies, your findings aren't going to generalize well, um, and that is just an accepted kind of limitation or boundary of qualitative studies. Um, but it's worth noting because qualitative studies have low sample sizes by necessity and by design. You know, you're interviewing, like if, if you conducted interviews, for example, eight people, 10 people, 12, maybe 15 at the most. Those are very low sample sizes. But that's the only way you can get the kind of in-depth information um, that qualitative studies are designed to do, right? You can't, you can't get that kind of in-depth information in quantitative studies with, you know, surveying 100 people. Um, but it's worth, it's worth discussing in this section um, that that's kind of the trade-off of qualitative studies, that your findings won't generalize well, but they're not designed to. They're designed to get that, that in-depth information with uh, smaller sample sizes. Uh, implications for practice, and there's another one I'll get to in a minute. Um, recommendations for further research. So, you know, there's a reason why we conduct studies, right? And not, not just to get the, you know, to meet the requirements to get the degree, of course, but um, to um, to provide us with knowledge, right? And this is knowledge that can have application for practice. Uh, it's knowledge that can contribute to research. So, what can in, in implications for practice, um, or sometimes it's called significance, practical, you know, significance for practice. Um, what can your findings tell folks at the level of practice, uh, whatever that happens to be? If it's an education study, for example, you know, what can it tell teachers? Um, what, how can it inform, how can your findings inform administrators maybe? Um, so, you know, the people, the stakeholders who are, you know, most connected to the, um, most interested maybe in the results of your studies how, how would that how can that those inform what they do um what's it mean for professionals in your field and you can get kind of nuts and bolts here and you can get pretty specific um you know does it mean things like you know increased training does it mean things like more uh, professional development you know if it if it means more training and professional development can that come in the form of seminars you know uh, on the job training or is it is something you know that uh, these folks need to do on their own um so you can get kind of it that that level the specific and nuts and bolts level of practice when you're when you're um this section and the the suggestions or the implications should stem from your findings they're not general recommendations like if you're doing an education study and you say, oh, you know, it's practically it's 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 important that we pay teachers more money. And it's like, well, that is important. But if your study wasn't about that in education, you don't want to include it as a general recommendation. The, the, the implications for practice and the recommendations for practice practice should stem from from your findings. Um, recommendations for further research and this is just like it sounds again based on your findings and sometimes based on your limitations what do you recommend for further research in the area um, so for example if you have a finding um, for a research question or a theme that 
did not support previous research, that suggests a degree of inconclusiveness. You can certainly recommend more research in that area to, you know, to help um, get you know, more conclusive answers. Um, if um, let's see, ba recommendations based on limitations, say um, you didn't get, you conducted a quantitative study, your sample size was low, you didn't get an adequate sample size, your study was underpowered, you can recommend that researchers replicate your study, but address that limitation to ensure that they get, um, you know, a, a, a large enough sample size, or whatever the, the limitation happened to be in your study, you can recommend that researchers replicate it, uh, but address that specific limitation. Um, any findings that are new or novel uh, or unexpected, um, certainly would be uh, a great foundation for recommend recommendations for further research. You know, something that, that you didn't expect or something that's new um, definitely needs to be further explored. Um, let's see, and, and recommendations can also take the form of different types of study with different designs to get different kinds of information. Um, so if you, for example, conducted a quantitative study, a correlational study to see if two constructs were related in a certain population, um, you found that they were, um, well, that's great. Well, then you can maybe um, you know, recommend uh, qualitative research to understand that um, that relationship better and then from a different angle from from the uh, you know from the perspectives of, of of the people involved but really getting their take on it right um you can recommend you know case studies for example if you you wanted to recommend like a more comprehensive understanding of a topic or of the topic um you know case studies involve multiple sources of data so you could uh, recommend a case study on your topic to get, you know, to get more data and more data from different perspectives. Um, longitudinal studies. Longitudinal studies are studies that occur over time and they have multiple data collection points. Um, and those are good to study uh, processes, things that are, that are uh, you know, process over time or something that's dynamic and that changes. So the point is that you can also recommend, um, you know, different kinds of studies uh, to get different kinds of information on your topic. Uh, and here we are at the summary already. Um, and a couple of things here uh, is not only it's a, the summary of the chapter, right? It's going to be the last thing in your dissertation and your study. It's, so it's going to kind of summarize the study. So, and also check your school's template. Sometimes at some schools, there is no summary. You can just end with the recommendations for future research. So <laughs> yay for that, right? Um, but some schools do require a summary. Um, and like other summaries, it recaps the major points from the chapter. Um, and resist the urge to do the, I don't know what happens sometimes people, um, it seems like they, they forget how to write summaries or something. And they, they just kind of say, say, in this chapter, I did this, this, and this, and this. And they just kind of list their, their headers, which isn't a real summary. So make sure you, you, you provide it, you know, you recap major points from the chapter. The other important thing to do, because it's the end of the, uh, the dissertation, the end of the study, you want to leave the reader with a take home message that involves the most important things about your study you want them to remember. Okay, um, so sell it. So sell the importance of your stu study um, and leave the reader with, with the most important things you want them to remember, whether it was um, important findings about the connections between, between two constructs, a new finding, an unexpected finding, um, uh, you know, what it tells us that we didn't expect or what it, conf it confirms something that's really important. Um, it, you know, really hit that that message hard at the end. Okay, and this is our contact information. This is a small description of what we do. Um, basically, we're an editing, a consulting, and a statistics service. Um, 
and uh, you know not only do we provide editing and consulting but it's the editing we provide is um what's called developmental editing so it's it's editing design not just kind of line editing but it's editing design to help you um, see what's working you know at the macro level what's not working what still needs input you know how things are aligning uh you know assistance basically in helping you to develop the document into what it needs to be to get through and to have a, a good study um, as well as statistics services but um, more of the, about this can be found on our website and you can also talk to somebody if you're interested in just talking to somebody more about what we do um, okay i'm going to open it up to questions if you have any questions um, please put them in the question and answer box or the chat box and I'll, and I'll try to answer them. Um, let's see, I have one here. Any data analytics support using Python as an option? Um, I don't know um, because I'm not a methods person. So I, I can't really answer that one, but we do offer methods seminars uh, uh i'm sorry webinars and um seminars on i'm sorry webinars on chapters three and four which involve the methodology and the results um so attending one of those methods webinars we, we, the person could probably answer your question about that okay here's another one in regards to the editing practices do you, do you align said practices with the student school's rubric for the dissertation. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Okay, I'll, I'll get back to the, the, the question about the um, data analytics in a minute. Um, yeah, so do we, it sounds like this, this question is about do we um, kind of follow your school's template when we help you out? Yes, we do. Um, yeah, we do. We do follow your school's template um, as best we can, and make sure that that you are too. So yeah, that that's part of it. Um, so we'll ask you if you, your school does have a template. Um, if you sign on with us, um, just send it to us so we can help ensure that that we're sticking to it and that you are too. Okay. Okay. Someone okay, answered that one. Okay. Okay, uh, that question was any any other questions? Anybody? I'll give you a few few uh, minute or two if you need to type something in the chat box or the question and answer box. No, no questions. Everybody's good on the chapter five. Okay, well, um, okay, let's see. Can you write it for me? No. Um, simple answer, no. Um, we, we, we don't write like the chapter five. Um, what we do is we have you draft it and we edit and help you with the draft. Um, and we can also guide you in drafting it. We can do that um if you need help like understanding you know what's in the sections or what belongs in the sections but we don't actually draft it for you now ah, i was kidding <laughs> but i didn't know about the guiding aspect so it ended up okay right okay i'm sorry i didn't get that um uh, because some people ask that seriously um, yeah, uh, yeah, and we do, we, we can't guide you, right? So, um, you know, if you have questions, like I said, about w what's expected or what belongs here, or you're just kind of not getting like what they're asking for in the template, we can help you like un understand it um, and kind of, you know, put it in terms that, uh, that may make more sense to you. So, yeah. Okay, anybody else? No? Okay, well, thank you, everybody, for attending. Um, I hope it was helpful. And again, we do, we have uh, resources on our website. Um, we offer other webinars on other topics, on other chapters. Um, and again, if you, if you, if you want to just see what we offer, you're welcome to make a, uh, 
appointment for a consultation. But good luck, all of you. And again, thank you for attending.